Hey, it's Nick here from Ways of Wealth. I hope everybody's having a great day. I just wanted to take this opportunity to give you a tour around uh, Quest Trade's IQ Edge platform. Uh, for those of you who are interested in uh, joining Quest Trade, I do have an affiliate link in the description. But in this video, we'll break down a little bit of the tools that are in the platform and also kind of the setup that I have. It's already up on the screen. We'll break it down. We'll go through uh, kind of the way that I use the platform. But obviously, um, let's get right into it. Uh, on the top left hand side, it's uh, a summary of your account. It shows what positions you're in. Um, if you take a quick look there, I'm in, I'm in DLR.to. It is um, what I'm doing right now is uh, Norbert's Gambit. I'm looking to convert Canadian dollars to US dollars. This happens to be uh, the most cost efficient way to do so. Um, uh, so it gives you an indication. Uh, of your asset allocations, it shows you, uh, you know, what percentage are in ETFs. You can even break it down, look at sector, um, industry, uh, and currency. Uh, so that just gives you further detail. Um, orders, if you had anything that was pending that kind of hadn't been executed yet. Uh, position shows you, you know, you can get it set up and customized in here to show you uh profit and loss on the day profit and loss overall market value percentages of the portfolio um from there executions last five days all the way up to a range that you can specify yourself uh that that position in dlr uh was just on friday uh so time place it gives you all that information balances shows you how much cash how much you have in play and then just margin. Uh, I typically don't use margin, but it would just show you uh, the amount that, that you buying power that you have. Uh, so that could be accessed by clicking this top tab here. Uh, everything in this screen is customizable. So again, like I said, this is the way that I have it set up. Uh, you could come in here and, and customize it the way that, that you see fit. Maybe you like options. I personally am not a I, I'm not there yet when it comes to options, but uh, like I just popped up there, you could even, you know, scroll down and have it as a separate function. So just come down here and the screen moves with you. So, yeah, I personally don't use options, so I'm going to get rid of that. But um, um, as you can see, we'll move on to the next part. And I wish that I was recording this during market hours because it would give you a little bit more indication. But what I like to do during the day is to see what's moving. Maybe it's sector, maybe it's company. Um, I'll come in here. I have it for the Canadian markets and the US. And you can come in here, see top gainers on the day. You can see top losers, most active, so forth. And um, both on the Canadian and US side of things. So this can be found market movers. So by clicking this, it'll pop up this tab here. It will give you information on stocks and kind of what I'm using when I'm placing orders. So TD is the one that I have up, for example, uh, would give you information of like 52 week high, 52 week low, your earning state. So they're expected to report next week. Um, you have a uh, dividend uh, per share, uh, dividend yield, uh, X dividend date, uh, price to earnings, earnings per share, average volume, and so forth. Um, from here, you can kind of get an indication when you hit snap coat of what the current bid price is, what the ask is, and how many contracts are being sought out on the market. If I am interested in doing a little bit more of a swing trade, which is what I primarily use this account for, this is kind of like just a, a trading account for me. Um, I'll come down into the chart section and, and, and I'll show you a little bit about, you know, what you can do on the chart side of things. But, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to, to switch securities here. Normally, if you just type in a name, you know, whether it's uh, Royal Bank, um, what it'll do is it'll just pop up a bunch of options um, coming down there. So I don't know why it's being a little bit delayed so i apologize for that so royal bank .to, um obviously you know if you want to take a look at that one or we can jump back to td because that's the one that we were looking at before 
.to just signifies that it trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, what I do typically is I like to look at the one year chart. Um, it's nice uh, later in the year when you can click year to date, but if we take a look at year to date now, it's really January, so it doesn't really show you much. Uh, you can customize uh, your your the way that these come out to be. Basically, this is the stock price. Uh, they're they're hiking ashy. I don't know if I pronounce that correctly, but basically, um, it, I yet to learn. I and I really do want to learn, so that's the way that I've kind of set that up. But normally, I'll look at a, a one year chart, and from there, this kind of gives you an indication of of what the chart looks like over the period. Is it on an uptrend, downtrend? I'm still learning the technical side of things, but um, what I've done is I've set up moving averages. I've set up a 13 day moving average, a 200 day moving average and a 63 day moving average. Those are Fibonacci's. Uh, typically what people use is 50 day moving average and 200 day moving average. And they are a signifier as to when the stock is in a bullish pattern. So as you can see here, the 13 day crosses over both the 63 and the 200. So the blue line is signified here by your blue is your 13 day, your red is your 200 and your your 63 is, is this green line here. So when this crosses over and it comes south or it comes less than uh, the 200 day moving average, this is a sell. So you're going to be selling in this range. Uh, you would have missed all of this volatility along the bottom. You would have then uh, got got some type of indication here that it was close to crossing, but it didn't. It kind of resisted um, and then came below. And here's where your real buy uh, signal would have came in is when that 13 day crossed over. Um, and it's been bullish ever since it's tested the 13 day moving average, but it stayed well north of the 200 so everything looks good uh, on that side you can see at the bottom of the chart it'll let you know when dividends occur and how much per share you'd be getting it also shows you the earnings and and how much the earnings per share were to get you so you can come in here and kind of um you know your trend indicators your moving average so i just added another one there i would double click on this and then from there i would kind of go in and say okay and, uh, next at 50, I'm going to have 50. Uh, okay, apply. And then from there, your purple line becomes your 50 day moving average. So like I said, again, uh, the purple line crosses over the green line, which is your two. Uh, my apologies, the red line uh, is your bullish pattern. Um, from there, what I also I, I like to look at is my RSI, which is relative strength index. You can also find this in the momentum. Uh, side of things. So if you click on that, basically you'll get the relative strength and it's basically a variance. Anything kind of 70 to 80 means that it's overbought, means that it should typically sell off. So as we can see here, obviously we hit that upper range of the two red bands. We then had our sell off uh, for a long period of time. This kind of stayed below 20, which is kind of on the lower range of things as you can see as this started to pick back up and come back up we can see kind of the the stock price following the same and just you know my specialty happens to be on the macro side of things so we know um that the the traders the investors they all started moving back into the cyclicals in november and that's kind of where we see this RSI pushing up above into the overbought side of things. And this kind of reflects in the share price and kind of where the trend, um, the, the 50 day cross the 200. Uh, and then from there, you can also have volume. So you can see a lot of volume around the dividend people are getting in, getting that nice juicy dividend. And yeah, so there's like multiple different things you can do. You can get into the drawing side of things and say, okay, this is my lower range. This is what the stock looks like on the higher. So typically what some people do is they'll buy down here and they'll sell up here. 
So this is just some of the other ways that you can break down a stock. It's obviously trading at the upper end of this band. What will it do? It seems to, you know, hit this as a point of inflection and come back down. Is it some people consider it bullish if it breaks up to the upside and some people use this as a gauge to, you know, sell puts and play it on the way down. So we will clear those drawings. And then we will also look at, you know, there's there's Fibonacci extensions. This one, my apologies, is the wrong one. Yes. I think it's Fibonacci arcs. This one I don't really understand. Yeah, so this is kind of getting into more of advanced this is obviously just the the way that i have it set up and and some of the you know tips and tools that i use uh, this little scroll bar allows you to look at the bigger picture you can also slow it down you can also um let me go back to my pointer here you can also you know zoom in to certain areas by clicking and highlighting on it and taking a look at what's happening on the bigger picture um, again, scrolling out here to take a look and see, okay, this is a little bit of a longer term looking into it. You can get in here and look at, you know, what is 10 years of the company look like? Oh, that's great. Uh, it's going up. Um, you know, if there's something, you can get some comparisons in here, custom symbol. Hey, let's take a look at, at how, um, how Royal Bank compares, which one is the better company to buy. As you can see over this uh, 10 year period, um, TD is up 70 something percent and uh, Royal Bank is up 82 percent. So obviously Royal Bank would be the long better longer term hold and obviously you can get in here and do all your comparisons um, to see, you know, different companies in the same sector. Um, also, you can see on the watch list, these are watch lists that I've uh, built out. These are, you know, Chinese stocks trading in, in North America ETFs that cover, you know, China very bullish on that in the next five to 10 years with the growing middle class. These are some ETFs, the cybersecurity one that uh, video that I touched on a few weeks back. Uh, we also have the Canadian version of the ARC. They basically replicate water, super bullish on that. Uh, these are stocks that trade on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, you can see in here that uh, this company is going to have a dividend relatively soon. Earnings are expected in in you know February 23rd, which is just a couple days away. You have analyst uh, rating changes. Um, so that's pretty much the bulk of that. You can come in here, create a new watch list depending on um whatever it is obviously crypto there's a bunch of new uh crypto ones that have come on this scene uh this happens to be you know running a little bit slow right now but you can come in here and add whatever um sector you're looking at you know depending on you know if it's tech or whatever kind of maybe builds your own etf style of things um but yeah just other things that i've been touched on you can get a, a news bar that comes in there that would pop up you know, news uh, on a particular stock or, or something that could potentially move the market. You can set up alerts, um, P&L calculator. This kind of goes more into options. You can take a look. Uh, SPY is normally a good one uh, for options. I know a lot of people work there. Uh, you can use the Black-Scholes model, uh, which is big in, in options to figure out if the option is trading at a premium or a discount. Uh, I know that a lot of um, uh, traders do use the Black Scholes model, so they do have this and the binomial model that I'm not too familiar with. But basically, you know, you can take it to the extent that you need to take it um, or you can use it just uh, primarily as taking a look at, OK, what's the long term trend of the chart? You don't need to get in there with the 50 day or, or RSI or anything like that. You can just take a look at the bigger picture and see is the company growing um obviously you know everybody wants to know what their account looks like you also have you know an indication of maybe new stocks that you're learning about so uh, this is the way that i personally set mine up uh, let me know if there's something that i should add or or any questions that you may have questrade does have a very good uh, chat program 
I uh, prefer that over the call-in. Uh, if you do have any other questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll see if I can help you out with that. And again, if you don't have Questrade, I do have an affiliate link in the description. So I would appreciate any support. Obviously, I would be getting uh, some type of commission from it. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, the way that I have my IQ Edge set up, uh, the Questrade platform. And I uh, hope you all have a great week on the markets. Happy trading.